Hey, what up YouTube? Um, this is the video in which I will show you how to do the uh, the uh, the Polaroid fakes, the fake Polaroids using images taken with uh, any camera. In my case, it's probably going to be a Ricoh GR3 or a GR3X. So, dark table. Shall I just pop over to the dark table homepage for you? Show you where that is. Like this. So we're going to go up here and we're going to say dark table and darktable.org and this is dark table and you click on the install tab up here and you can see you've got uh, some source code available you've got an executable installer for windows you've got two different installers for mac and i will guess that the arm 64 is the a new binary package for uh, Apple Silicon, the M1 and M2 chips. Uh, so yeah, um, I'm running this one, 401.1. It's uh, the newest one, and that's what we're going to take a look at now. I will in another video. I've had a couple of uh, chats with uh, some subscribers, and we're almost up, uh, up to 800 now. So well done. Uh, I'm glad you're liking this stuff um, a couple of people have been asking about various printing options um, uh, as well as Lightroom and uh, I'll show you in another video why I didn't use Lightroom and I'll also show you some of the features that Apple Photos have that you might not be aware of if you're a Mac user uh, but anyway this is Darktable now we're going to take an image now and we're going to make it printable <clears throat> as one of these uh, fake Polaroids. Now this obviously is not a square image. So when you open that table and you import some images uh, uh, you will find yourself probably in this section here called, called the light table. Now depending on the setting in uh, preferences you may or may not have JPEGs visible. Um, because Darktable is a raw image uh, editing software suite um, you can in fact tell it to never import JPEGs but I, uh, I want to see my whole library because there are all sorts of filters that you can uh, set up to look at your images so you can see here we've got uh, 2022 uh, 2021, 2020, and I've got images that go all the way back to 2015 in this collection on the disc right now. And uh, these are not all of my images, I've got some in cloud storage as well, but this is uh, what's available to me on this disc right now. So you can tag them, you can sort by uh, some of the EXIF data, you know, the metadata in the images, and uh, and you can do all sorts of things to sort it and these are some things I need to learn about so anyway we're going to make a square Polaroid image of this this file here so when I double click in the light table it brings up the image in the dark room and here we can start messing about with the image okay now I want to crop it now in version 4 uh, cropping has got its own module now separate modules you just write crop in this little search field here and there you get crop okay now the last crop i used on this was a square crop so it's just applied that now uh, but you can look at this and check out the various cropping styles and you can also do it in freehand or you can just crop to the original image format and just kind of um, shrink the image or, or crop into the image with the same dimensions but we want square here for a Polaroid so it's and then you can move it around you can see and you can also resize it so we're we'll getting here uh, 399 uh, 3999 by 3999 pixels excuse me and I want something like that. I don't want that dark edge in over there. So I'm gonna, gonna put it about there and say that's my crop. So when I now go and click on this bar here now, boom, it's now cropped. Now, like I think all other uh, 
uh, raw file image editing software this is non-destructive so this is not this this tells me that the crop is on and I can switch it on and off you see so I can always get back to the original image the changes you make to a file are saved in a metadata file by the side of the image and don't actually destroy or manipulate the original image so cropping is done this is a JPEG so I'm not going to do too much too many things like uh, raising shadows or controlling highlights and stuff like that you, you should do that on the raw files if you still have them uh, but otherwise it's quite a nice bright image anyway so I don't think I have to do too much with that I do like a little bit of vignetting when I make these uh, uh, old style here old style images so when you when you uh, find vignetting v-a-i-n-g vignetting there it is like that switch it on and you can see it will darken up the edges uh, you can affect the scale here and you can see the more the smaller I go on the scale the more vignetting is created so I'm just gonna go about there and you can also grab these handles here and change the shape of the vignetting it doesn't have to be a perfect circle so we could do something like that and say all right I'm happy with that and then again click on this bar here and the uh, the vignetting controls go away but the vignetting is now applied okay I'm gonna go over now to the print section which is hiding under other up here okay so we go under that and let's choose print and uh, this panel here now just contains the one module print settings okay down here we have a print button and then we have information about the printer the page image layout and print settings now I'm not going to touch any of this I'm going to leave this as standard I'm going to avoid this uh, because it's a little, it gets a little bit complicated when you set the origin of the X and Y point on the image and stuff like that all I want is to get this working and the correct paper size so you can see here we've got the printer uh, these are the, this is from the list of printers I can select from so if I go in and look at the Mac print settings here you can see I have uh, the Canon installed kind of twice one is uh, connecting over Wi-Fi and the other is cable so I do have the option of printing over a serial cable or uh, printing over Wi-Fi so that it's the same printer okay so we're going to close that so then we're going to go uh, into the print settings here first of all select the correct paper now I'm printing on the GP501 Canon paper which is 10 by 15 I believe that's centimeters and so also 4 by 6 inches it's a 200 GSM paper so we're gonna select the correct size of paper here so we've got a 4 by 6 which is what they are select that keep my units in millimeters here and now I believe that it's kind of remembering what I was on with the previous printer or previous paper selection sorry so I'm just going to go back to dark room for one second like that and then back to print and there it is set up just how I want it this is six millimeters to the right six millimeters on top six millimeters to the left it does a good job of lining it up exactly as i like it with these settings here now if i change these settings they don't always immediately appear here but if i go back to dark room with one click there and then back to the print settings now it's changed so i increase the uh, margins on the left and right you see the white borders have gotten bigger and uh, because it's a square image and it's not stretching or compressing the image across the horizontal it's shrinking it at the top as well so we don't want that I want it on six all the way around there like that and then six over here 
like that. Now the image is staying in the middle right now, but if I go back to Darkroom one more time, and then back to Print, that might be a bug or a feature or something that it's supposed to do, but now you can see it's looking exactly like I want it to look. So I'm just gonna pause this video here right now and then I'm gonna go and get my camera and film the results, okay? So this is where we are. Uh, printer is on, back flap is up, front flap is up and out. Got your 10 by 15 or 4 by 6 paper here. Glossy side up, matte side down. So, uh, and the guides are here and in. And you're just going to pop a couple of pieces of paper in there. Like that, and like that. Just let them sit there nicely. Don't press these in too tightly. So that's the printer on and ready. Go over here now, and with these settings, with these margins, now I'm going to hit the print button like that, and uh, it just says processing. And down there, you can see the text has come on the screen printing on Canon IP, blah blah. And the printer comes to life. And if it's been switched off for a while, this printer will sometimes clean its head without doing anything to the paper and bang out it comes really quick and there you have the first stage of the fake polaroid now we need to cut it and for that i recommend a uh you know a paper shear like this one so here we were here we are in my wife's newly renovated office minus one door that needs painting this used to be one of the kids' rooms, so it's full of stickers and stuff. So this uh, door needs to be cleaned up and painted. But this is her office. And uh, this is a paper shear. I, I think you call it a paper shear. Um, I got this for about eight British pounds or seven euro or something like that. Just uh, a while ago for this, especially for this project. It's a bit of a cheapo. But um, it does the job perfectly well. And I found that for these uh, uh, fake, just need to raise that up, line the paper up on that back edge there, and I line it up to this CD front cover. That line right there, like that. And then just cut on that one. And there you have it. One fake Polaroid, okay? Uh, yeah, it's it's not a good one, this one. It's not a brilliant one, but all it has to do is cut a single piece of paper every now and again. So why go out and spend a hundred quid or more, or a hundred euro, on s something that you can get done for seven or eight euro? Yeah, see, lovely. And they all come out nice and evenly. I printed this one at an earlier date uh, with slightly different settings, slightly smaller margin, but you get the picture. They look great. And uh, this is my favorite little cute gas station that I photographed one night with the GR3X, I believe. Just do that one as well. But yeah, it's really cool. Line it up to that one on the 12 centimetre mark, or as they call it, CD front cover. Uh, put that. And there we have some fake Polaroids. So that's how I do it with Darktable. Um, and now the cool thing is with Darktable now, I'm going to go back to show you screenshots. Uh, the cool thing is this when I go back to the light table, to select another image. All of these settings that you can see here now will be remembered. As long as I feed this a square image, perfectly square image, it will be ready to print just by selecting another image over in light table. So let's just go back there now, over to light table and we'll check out some weird image somewhere. This one. This image, a slice of cheesecake 
up on top of a mountain in Germany actually in Hitler's summer house also known as the Eagle's Nest we went up there to see what it was like oh, I got this nice uh, shot of a a yummy piece of cheesecake with the Ricoh GR3X I do believe no the GR3 18 millimeters I can see it down there okay so that's up on a very bright mountain so now I've double clicked on this one and that's brought me over to dark room so now I am going to crop it so again right crop like that there's the cropping module now if I switch that on it should crop it nice and square and I can move the square around and I can just bring it in a bit and it will retain a square now when I move around from the corners I just want that like that lovely oh, just a little bit bigger maybe like that so that's what I want and I want a little bit of vignetting like this like that switch on vignetting darken the edges just a little bit and like that brightness saturation so I'll pull the brightness down to increase the vignetting around that image like that lovely then click in the bar next to the word again and that's what it looks like now when I go over to the print module that should be sitting in the square exactly as it should be and then we can just hit print one more time boom and off it goes to the printer so yeah that's it that's all I have for you now and um, next video I will show you uh, the print section in Lightroom compared to this and why I kind of prefer printing from dark table and uh, you can't see it but I'm looking at the the fake Polaroid in my hand of the cheesecake and it looks delicious so thanks a lot bye for now I'll talk to you soon another video coming up we'll do some uh, comparisons of just the interface of uh, Lightroom Apple photos on the Mac and uh, dark table just for the printing okay see ya